Greetings, beautiful. You are listening to Stepping into the Light with Julia Treat. That's me, your host, from juliatreat.com. Welcome, welcome if you're new to my podcast. If you've been listening for a while, thank you so much. I am grateful for your dedication to listen to, listening to me ramble and <laughs> talk about some crazy stuff, laugh, cuss sometimes. Okay, let me change that often and cry sometimes. I always feel like when I'm when I'm recording this podcast and I'm just talking to family, which that's what we are. We're a soul family. We're all born to a our birth family, but we are seeking our soul family and quite often those are different souls roaming this earth. So some of you know I've been planning a retreat in Sedona at my favorite place in the entire world. I'm thinking favorite, at least one of the top three. We'll talk about the other two in another podcast, but yeah, Angel Valley in Sedona. And it's where I had my very first experience. Like, I don't even know how to explain the experience. First, let me, in case you don't know the story, let me tell you how I ended up there. It was at a time in my life when I was at the lowest of the low, 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 low. I was at my rock bottom. You know, I always say when you hit, you know, sometimes you got to hit rock bottom to find your way out. I mean, hell, I've hit rock bottom several times. (laughs) I have. Let's be honest here. But this was one that was uh, probably the most profound. And it's because I was very, very ill with what I didn't know at the time was Lyme disease. I had to close my private practice as a speech pathologist because I was too sick to work. I was going through a um, debilitating divorce, okay? That's the word that just came out of my mouth, and that's really what it felt like. I was ridden with guilt and shame and so much. Everything was what I considered wrong in my life at the time. Little did I know that it all had happened so that I would be open to anything, to the transformation that was about to occur. So I heard about this pilgrimage to Sedona. In fact, that's what I'm calling mine. My retreat is called Pilgrimage to Sedona, Returning to Light. Goosebumps. Oh, I got goosebumps. Returning to light. It is returning to your own light, your own divinity. So, I got goosebumps again, sorry. (laughs) I know. I'm like sitting there going, universe, hello, I got it. Okay. So I heard about this pilgrimage to Sedona. And I didn't know the woman putting it on, but I knew I needed to be there. I just knew it. I don't know if I just, something in my soul knew this was the way out. This was the answer. I didn't know anything about her. I just knew I had to go. So I was destitute. Yes, I was deep in debt, like honestly contemplating bankruptcy and not finding, you know, not seeing a way out. I was desperate. And there's several times that I've dropped to my knees and, and, and begged to God or prayed to God to please, please, please show me the way. Help me to find the way out of this. Well, this was one of those times. And so when I found out about the trip and found out the price, I think the, like the down payment was... Um, $963. And the reason that number sticks in my head is you will find out very shortly. I will never forget that number. I didn't have $963. Not even close. And so I had no freaking idea how I was going to go, but I had just started like tapping and tuning into the angels that year, like within that year. And so I was learning how to you know, call on them for help and, and ask for guidance. And this was the first time, seriously, I like put him to this test. So I told the angels, if I'm supposed to be on this pilgrimage to Sedona, then you come up with the money. You get, you send it to me and I'm going. I will take care of the rest. I'll get my body on that plane, however sick I feel, and I'm going. And I let it go. I actually didn't obsess about it. I let it go. Um, just, you know, because I had always learned, you give it to them and then you just let it go. And you follow any guidance. Like, I tell people now, because I have people that contact me to say, hey, I did the same thing and I told my angels, if I'm supposed to work with Julia coaching, then you bring me the money. 
And it didn't show up, so I guess I'm not supposed to. And I go, well, did you do anything different? Like, did you do anything on your part? Like, or did you just say, bring it to me, and you went about your normal stuff? Like, we do have to do our part energetically here. Not just believing that it will come, but it's really moving into that vibration of joy and bliss and love and what would make me happy. And it, Again, if you haven't listened to my podcast about vibration, they're going to be very helpful for you. So even though I was at a low, the low, 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 lowest of the low, I kept imagining myself on that trip and what it would be like. Like I was imagining just, just it would be magical. And I didn't know why. I thought I'd come back healed, something. Or I'd get my answer. Or I'd just feel better about myself. And so two weeks after I'd given it to my team, my spiritual team, I got a letter in the mail. And it was from my car insurance company. And I, re- I thought it was odd because I had just paid my car insurance bill. So I couldn't understand why they would be sending me a check until I opened it and then realized, oh, it's that dividend check, that thing I get every year. So my company sends me a dividend check, which is, I guess that's what it's called. That's what I've been calling it. That's what is written on the check, I think. It's a check for being a safe driver and not having anything happen. It's generally about $100 a, a year. So I opened it up, and when I realized it was that dividend check, I actually, like, for a second thought, oh, this has, this I can put towards the trip. But as I opened it all the way, you can imagine my jaw falling on the floor as I saw that the amount was exactly $963. And I ain't lying. <laughs> I was blown away. That was the first time that the angels showed me the power that they have and I'm going to say I've asked for other things in the meantime, you know, since that day, which is many years ago. It doesn't always show up, but it's because there's something better coming. Okay, so this, this happened to be the thing I think was, that was for the best for me at that time because it showed up. So I went on the pilgrimage. I went to Sedona. So we had been introduced online to some of the people going. I think there were about 20 people there. And that's how many, uh, no, I, I take that back. I think we're looking at 15 to 18. There's, it, it's a small number, but it's because that's what they can facilitate. That's the housing they have, the amount of beds. But it's perfect because it allows me to be in close contact with everyone that goes. It's also going to be better for me because I don't have to, you know, um, I'm not going to say worry about more people because I'm not going to worry about anything. It's just, again, we can all have a very close, intimate experience. So fly to Phoenix. So you have to fly into Phoenix Airport. I'm going to give you some details in case, you know, this is starting to be something you might want to do. So the closest airport is Phoenix, and it is two hours away. Now, before you go, oh, my God, because I fly actually all day long. It takes me all day from, if I leave from Scranton, I have to actually stop, um, stop, I think, yeah, stop once. I'm trying to remember, but it's long flights each time. I mean, you have to stop, and then you have a layover. Perhaps if I go to Philadelphia, it would be different, but that's a two-hour drive for me, and I'm like, what's the point? I might as well just, I don't know that I want to drive somewhere and find a parking place in a foreign airport. So, anywho, I drive all day. I look forward to it because that two-hour drive to Sedona, gets you ready. It's like setting the scene for the magic that's going to happen because as you're driving, it's just, it's desert. Still pretty though, pretty desert. Driving, it's peaceful. Um, I made the mistake one year of, of renting a convertible. Okay, that's not the smartest thing to do in Arizona. I was burned by the first day. <laughs> uh, so you're driving that way and then as you get closer to Sedona, all of a sudden, you begin to see these rock formations coming out of the, the earth, and they're massive, massive. And you're, I can't even explain what you feel. It, you feel it, though. As soon as you start seeing them, it is this magical, like, I'm actually, my, I'm getting excited just talking about it. Um, I'm actually typing in Sedona rock formations as I'm talking to you because I want to talk to you, tell you about some of them that we'll be going to on, on our trip. So you drive in that two-hour drive. You don't even, I'm telling you, you don't even care how long it's been because it's a, when you get there, you're in awe. 
So you see all these different formations and they all have their own name and one's called Cathedral Rock. And by the way, these these are like magical vortexes. It's it's the the energy of the vortexes that is so heightened in Sedona that I know I'm I'm sorry. I'm typing as we're looking at I'm I'm talking as I'm typing. That's very difficult for me. So I am Okay, let me see here. I wanted to find something that describes the vortexes of Sedona. Vortexes of Sedona. Well, I just put it in there. So Sedona, they are spiritual vortexes and they are powerful and transformational energy centers that are located at specific sites throughout Sedona. Now, if you've heard me talk about Seven Tubs, where I walk often here in Northeast Pennsylvania, there are magical vortexes there. There are vortexes all around the world and you can type in and find different places in the world, but we're talking about Sedona today. So each place in Sedona, each rock formation There's a different vortex and it affects you in a different way. And it's all, any way that it affects you is positive, beautiful, amazing, and transformational. So that's Sedona, this whole area of Sedona. Angel Valley is the retreat center that is in Sedona. And I don't know the site. I I don't know the site actually, but I looked it up. See, I'm interested. I always like to study stuff. So now I'm looking into ley lines, which are the energy lines that run through the earth and connect at certain places in the world. Because I actually have a sneaky suspicion that several places here in Northeast Pennsylvania have some massive ley lines that just haven't been, I'm going to say, discovered or whatever yet. But Sedona, they have discovered the ley lines. All even they've discovered ley lines in... Stonehenge, at Stonehenge, like all over the world. But in Sedona, the way that the lines are set up, and I may not even be saying this correctly, but it forms a star in Sedona. Maybe it's the vortexes. Okay. Anyway, it forms a star. (laughs) I know. I'm not an expert yet. I'm working on it. Forms a star, and in the center of the star is Angel Valley. Now, I just learned that recently, and I was like, huh, I'm not surprised. Like, you kids can't make this shit up. Like, I'm not surprised. I was there. I know it's magical. I've been there a few times. So then something a couple of months ago, or I'm going to say several months ago, I just for some reason thought about Angel Valley again, and something told me to go, you know, something told me, go into Google Earth and punch in Angel Valley's coordinates. So I did, and as I zoomed in, I about fell over when I saw that their property is in the shape of a heart. (laughs) Seriously, do it. You can put it in yourself. So this morning when I was talking to Michael, who is the husband, who is the caretaker of Angel Valley, he and his wife, Amira, are the caretakers. They call themselves, they used to call themselves the caretakers of Angel Valley, the stewards. They, They care for the land. These are two people that, I'll be honest, they are so ah, full of love and light that I think some people get freaked out. Not freaked out, but they're so, like, vibrating so high that, I mean, he and I totally hit it off this morning. We were just like, he would say things about what's your intention, and I'd, he said, well, our intention at Angel Valley is this. And I'd said, well, this is my intention. And he would just giggle and go, oh, my God, like if every facilitator was like you, I wouldn't have to interview anyone because they actually interview people to see if it's a good fit. And let me just tell you this, too. Michael, the, the husband who's one of the caretakers, he channels Archangel Michael. He channels Archangel Michael. And so that's something we will probably be partaking in when we are there as a group. His wife does some really beautiful tours, vortex tours in Angel Valley, because Angel Valley has its own, like, vortexes. So there's four mountains that surround Angel Valley. And I believe, if I remember correctly, there was a tr- um, an indigenous tribe they, they brought in. It's a Native American tribe. To, um, what, like, study the land, to 
bless the land. And I believe it was the Native American tribe that named each mountain. Now it was Archangel Michael. See, this is the thing. I don't remember each of them. I think Uriel is one of them. Maybe Raphael. Um, I feel terrible that I don't remember because I spent so much time on Archangel Michael's mountain that I don't remember the names of the others. But we will learn that because they'll tell us again. But there's four mountains and they're massive and they, they surround it. And you can feel the energy of the angels there. In fact, I caught a photo, um, or I didn't, one of the girls in our group, in one of the times I went, she took a picture of Archangel Michael's mountain. And um, when she uploaded it at home, when she got back from the trip, she was blown away. The whole mountain, you can see the outline of Archangel Michael. I do have that up on my Instagram. My Instagram is juliatreat444. And all you have to do is, um, maybe I'll post it again, but just if you, po if you scroll through my photos, you'll see this, this massive mountains with trees on them and this big purple hue on the front. Just click on that. That's Archangel Michael's mountain. So Michael, the caretaker of of Angel Valley, when I was, I said, Michael, did you know, like, I have a picture of Archangel Michael's mountain, and he's on there, and he's massive, and I wrote about it in my book, and he's like, no, so I emailed that to him today, and, um, you know, we talked about other things, I told him how Archangel Michael had shown up in several pictures with, like, the sword right in front of me, so I had to send him those, because he wanted to see them, I mean, he is, like, so in tune with Archangel Michael. But Angel Valley, when we went around, the, we, we sat in a big circle the first night. Because, you know, what we're going to do the same thing as far as have it like a welcome dinner. We're all going to eat together and then get together. Um, it's called the Crystal Hall. Oh, my God. The Crystal Hall is magical in and of itself. It's an enclosed building, but it has windows around the whole space. Magical place. <laughs> but we sat around the circle and we went around the room. And our my mentor, who she ended up being one of my mentors, but the woman, Jackie, who put on the tour or the retreat, she said, you know, just go around the room. I just, let's just share with everyone why you're here. Like what brought you here? So everybody was sharing and I mean, beautiful stories. And then they got to me and I just sat there and I said, I'm here because I'm broken. Ooh, holding back the tea. I don't, I don't cry like I used to because I used to just start crying because I remember that moment like it's, like it was yesterday, and we're talking, I don't know, 2007, 2008, like somewhere in there, right before I awakened to my abilities, I believe, and I sat there and tears just flowed down my face. So that was my starting point to my healing, was going to Angel Valley. It was beyond my wildest dreams. It was beyond what I could have ever, ever imagined. I had no idea, first of all, it would be the first place I'd ever find my first heart rock ever. I now have found thousands by the, since then. I still have the one I found in Sedona. It was my first experience where I communicated with a bird who followed me all day long. We had to do a, well, not all day, we had to do a half day silent meditation or silent you know, move through your day in silence for three hours. It was like half a day. I, I'd never done that. I'd never just been silent. Silent, walking around the space. Some people would go read books. Some were sunning themselves. I decided silent meant not even reading books. Silent meant walking around, feeling the earth of the energy and being silent and letting the earth speak to me. And every time I would, you know, turn, you know, a curve or turn a corner or go behind a tree or across a river, this little bird would fly in and land beside me every, everywhere. And I would, you know, I started giggling about it. And then at one point I just said, I just finally realized, is this bird trying to tell me something? So I stood and I looked at the bird and I said, what are you, do you have a message for me? I'm trying to think of the, 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 the name of the bird, but it, he turned around. I say he. It turned around. Now, I'm, I'm sitting there waiting. What's the message? 
and I'm just starting to open up to my intuitive abilities. The bird turns around and on his back, there was like this black V. He was like light tan and white color. And in the, on his back, it was this black V and I heard victory. The bird came to tell me, victory, you are going to make it. You are going to succeed. You're going to be victorious. Your healing starts today. I stood there and sobbed and thanked this bird. And since that day, the birds are very common appearance in my life. I say all the time that your loved ones can come as birds, whether it's a cardinal, a blue jay, a, a crow, whatever. But do you know that angels come as birds as well? And I started to realize over the years that I have a massive team of angels. who have always been watching over me, who have always been loving me, and who have just been waiting for me to love myself. You have that team too. You have that massive team of angels. That's just part of your team. We have a massive team helping us. They want to. They don't want us to be sad. They don't want us to be mad. They don't want us to be sick. They don't want us to be broke. <laughs> they don't want us to feel broken. They want us to be in joy, to live life to the fullest, to experience love and excitement and new experiences every day. So I went to the group that night. We had to not had to, but we, we met again that evening. And everybody just kind of went around and talked about their experiences. And I don't think I have, I'm not, um, you know, everyone had really cool, amazing experiences. But when I told everyone about mine, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. <laughs> so our... Our time in Sedona, in Angel Valley, that, just in that retreat continued, and the, just the magic just kept going. <laughs> and that was my awakening. That was my, my time to return to the light, my own light. And that's what I can't wait to do for you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. And, oh, just so... Just so you know, heads up. Sorry, I'm sniffle, sniffle, sniffling. Um, the retreat, we, all, we do have dates pinned down. That's what I was waiting to do. And the retreat will be September, arrival will be September 13th, which is a Thursday. Checkout will be a Monday on the 17th, September 17th. So September 13th to 17th. <laughs> I'm only telling you because I like to give you details as we move forward and you can just, instead of saying, crap, I have to work or there's no way I can do that because of this, that you just start, you just stop those stories right now and do what I did. Angels. In fact, I think I told them if I'm supposed to be on that, then bring me the money. I told them I really, really want to be on that. <laughs> so I let them know I really, really wanted to be on it. I have since been to Sedona. I went to Angel Valley again. I went to another retreat. I've gone there and stayed in hotels. I have done, I have stayed in different, I have done different things there to have different experiences. I even went once for 10 days by myself, the time I rented the um, convertible and stayed at a hotel and began writing my book. And that was cool too. Like that was an amazing experience as well. But I, I can't wait to have a, I, I don't know if I'll ever have an experience like the one I, I told you about tonight. I welcome it if I ever get anything, because 
it's because it was that initial healing of my soul. It just, yeah, I've told you enough. <laughs> I could keep going, believe me. So, so y'all, if you, um, again, it's a small group that's going to be going. Um, uh, so I hope I get to see you there. It'd be magical time. I am even, even toying with the idea of after that, stay, you know, that checkout is the 17th, that I may stay another three days at a, one of the upper scale hotels with a handful of people, perhaps five, for kind of a VIP few days in Sedona, running around Sedona together, you know, getting to know each other, hanging out, telling stories, getting to know each other and just getting to know our soul family in a deeper level. So that would be like another three days, the VIP part. So, and I don't know, I might even put it open that if you can just come to the VIP thing, that's fine. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I would probably open it up to the people on the trip first, that if they want to stay longer with me, then that's cool. And then if that didn't get filled up after the initial retreat. So, so, so Angel Valley, it's going to be really healthy food. Healthy food, but it's delicious. Oh, my God. You will, and you lose weight while you're there, the crazy thing. You, it seems like you eat more, but you lose weight. So that'll be those whole um, five days and four nights there. And then the VIP part will be more of a luxurious setting where we're getting pampered, and if you want a glass of wine or you want a massage. And so they'll be, like I said, we're going to go from who, and here's the thing, we're going to, we're going to, feel the vibration of how this beautiful space for five days and we feel just as beautiful in this luxurious space we're always taking care of ourselves wherever it is all right beautifuls um i have not worked out the the money detail yet because i'm waiting on michael to finish the contract part and also i have asked him and amira to give me some pricing on a few different group activities that i want them to do um, since they are the stewards of that land and they understand it, I have some, and I've been to their, you know, I've been a part of their presentations, not even just presentations, the tours and the walking through and the, that I've asked them to give me some extras. So pricing is comes, coming soon. Take my advice. Don't start with, I wonder how much it's going to be. Okay. Cause right there, that's a lack mentality. Just, I'm going to be there. I want to be there. Take care of a team. I'm going to wait for the details. Let's go. Um, I am going to have payment plans just, uh, but it will be a down payment, which will happen um, soon. As soon as I know what the contract is and we get the details down, the down payment will happen soon. As soon as I post the retreat, if you want in, you have to give me the down payment. The second payment will be due in, I think, the second week in July. And then the third payment will be due in August. So just, again, I'm just helping you, just helping you put it out to your team. Okay, enough rambling. And one last thing, please. I have a contest going on with um, a friend who also has podcast. And um, we just have like this contest going on of how many people we can get, like how many people we can get to give us stars and reviews. Good reviews, by the way. No, I don't care. If you, if you want to give me, if you don't like what I say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have enough that like it that that doesn't even affect me. But if you could do it, and if you could do it on iTunes, that's the whole deal. I need more people to give me stars on iTunes. This is a contest that we're having for two weeks. I told her I'm going to kick her ass because I have the best listeners. <laughs> I did. And so if you can get on, and by the way, it also matters. It also would be very helpful if you listened to me through iTunes. I know it sounds crazy, but it's just the truth. If you can listen to me through iTunes, give me a star on iTunes, a review perhaps, I'm going to kick her ass. I've got two weeks. I appreciate it. All right, you all rock. Thanks again for listening to me. I had no idea I'd go this long, so hope it's okay. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed day.